though winters never got bad here in Florida, spring was bringing new energy. It felt like everything was happening so fast. New growth and green was popping up everywhere. Pollen was filling the air. Zabel kept sneezing. And we'd brought Claire King to Wormwood to save her from turning into a monster. We had a group meeting to discuss our next steps. Now we have three humans in Wormwood. Great. Maybe we should go with a classic tabula rasa and erase our memories. I do have a memory elixir. Why are you still here? I want to support Georgie. This is our house's business. Hey, Isabel. I'm okay with her being here. I know you are. Since Valentina has that spell, maybe we could just use it to erase Claire's memories of Wormwood? Shouldn't we question her about Georgie's death first? I mean, she's a suspect, right? Georgie's death was an accident. Mom, I keep telling you. My death was mysterious and the reports are inconclusive. I don't think she did it. You were the one who swore she did it. Why the change of heart now? She's a jerk and I hate her. But I don't think she's evil enough to be a murderer. Oh, because she apologized for her racist grandmother that murdered you in a bathroom? Yes. Georgie! Don't take that know-it-all tone with me. Mom, I keep telling you not to trust the police reports. How about this? We ask Claire questions and then erase her memory. Maybe she'll lie, maybe she won't, but it's better than nothing. That's a good idea. I can prepare one of my memory spells. Or we can use something that will actually work and get a potion from my shop. Oh, I'm sorry, are you a witch? No, but I employ real witches to bake my potions. Ugh, excuse me? I am a real witch. I am the boss of witches, a boss witch. Girls, girls, stop it. Valentina, I know you want to help, but please don't antagonize Zabel. Yes, Miss Romero. Zabel, stop smiling. I expect you to be civil to Valentina too. Yes, Miss Romero. Claire sauntered into the room with a wide grin on her face. I think she was adapting to Wormwood faster than I had. Guys! Everyone stared at the problem we had been discussing. Guess what? I've decided I want to be a monster. What? what? I want to be a monster. Permanently. Just not an umbrella monster. I was not impressed. I want to be something romantic. Like a werewolf. Or a vampire. We are pretty romantic. I do agree with that specific statement. But you becoming a monster is a bad idea, Claire. You get to be one. It wasn't a choice. What about being another cool ghost? It's not that simple, Claire. We'd have to get permission from the boogeyman. There's a lot of paperwork. So, let's get the pens out. You need a good reason why you want to become a monster. Yeah, um, why do you want to become a monster? Okay, hear me out. People suck, you know? Yeah, can't really argue with that. Yeah. So, I would get away from human society if I just, like, became a monster. Everything seems so much more chill here. What definition of chill are we using? And I wouldn't have to deal with all these gross human expectations. I don't have to worry about, like, doing what my parents want me to do or being popular on social media. You don't have to do that as a human. Oh, Hanako. You have absolutely no idea what it's like to be a human in this day and age. Wow, I had no idea. Okay, so like my favorite movie, Vampire High School Musical, which is based off of my favorite book, The Vampire High School Diaries. Just so you know, books didn't have any songs. Duh, <laughs> it's a book. Please stop talking. He's the vampire who spread through my heart like wildfire. Oh, I hate this. I feel uncomfortable. His eyes sparkle like sapphires. Poetic. Could do better? Probably. I'm afraid this isn't strong enough to convince the boogeyman. That's not fair! Georgie gets to be a monster! I didn't choose this! Someone murdered me and I woke up as a zombie! Georgie! You're being so dramatic! You drowned! Wait, you... think I drowned? I mean... That's, uh... Like what everybody said. Were you there when I died? I went to bed in the RV, and when I woke up, you were gone. Tony and Vincent had no idea where you were. Tony told me not to worry about it, 
And Vincent said you probably went home. I figured Vincent was right. And you didn't question it? Why would I question Vincent? He was the closest to you. Like, the most out of all of us. You two were like friends or whatever. What is that? Georgie, what's going on? It's the Van Helsing alarm. Long story short, Lucy Van Helsing hunts and kills monsters. Are we in danger? Mm, not so much. I'll go take care of this. But now, we certainly are. Zabel, you shouldn't go alone. Lucy might have her army with her. I'll help. That's not a good idea. It'd be funny to watch, though. I will go prove what a great monster I'd be. And I'll go because I'm already a great monster. I wish I had time to argue, but I don't. <sighs> if you're coming with me, let's go. It was evening. The woods on the outskirts of Wormwood were dark, and the air felt heavy. We finally spotted Lucy. Her mop of unnaturally red hair stood out amongst the forest greens and browns. She wasn't alone. Johannes, a clean-cut young man, and Greta, a muscle-bound giantess, were with her. They were snooping around the woods for signs of monsters. We stealthily crept closer. Until Zabel stepped on a twig. Lucy and her minions turned to face us. We stared at each other. Lucy, we are outnumbered. We can take them. We have the power of love on our side. I'm sorry, are we Care Bears now? Power of love, punch! Greta, no, this is dumb! Greta charged right at me. She was tall and broad, easily twice my size. Her fist came flying at my face. But Valentina, beautiful Valentina, lifted me by my armpits and swung me out of the way just in time. My love failed me. Stay away from my new monster friends! Claire went after Lucy with a log. Well, she's gonna die. The chunk of wood cracked against Lucy's skull. It was so loud, we all stopped in surprise. Ow! Hey! Lucy gets hit in the head a lot. I'm getting a little concerned. We're all worried about that, right? I wouldn't say worried. Joke's on you! I've been doing skull exercises. That's a thing? I don't think so. My skull is uncrackable! Ow! I punched her in the stomach! Yeah, we saw. Lucy pulled her sword from its sheath and quickly swung. Ow! Claire! Lucy had sliced across Claire's stomach. Everyone, even Greta and Johannes, froze as red blood gushed from the wound. O. M. G. Zabel quickly moved to Claire's side. She tore off part of her dress and secured it over the gash. Ash, get her back home! Lucy, what are you doing, you lunatic?! She's human! She's human? She's a species traitor! Wait, so she's not a monster? Greta, stop her! But the monsters... We're not murderers, we're leaving. Okay. Greta, collect your brother! He's endangering us! Um... Do you want us to die? Greta, she's insane! I'm sorry, Johans. Greta had wrapped her arm around Johannes's neck in a sleeper hold. She choked him tightly until he passed out. At the same time... Lucy raised her sword again. That was when Hanako leapt into action. Ugh, I hate doing this. But what else is a ghost gonna do? Hanako, no! Hanako phased through Lucy's skin and entered her body. Lucy's eyes rolled into the back of her head and she dropped her sword. Slowly, ectoplasm started leaking from her mouth. What? What's going on? Lucy was thrown back, slamming into a tree. She slumped to the ground, out cold. Hanako floated out of Lucy's limp body. Lucy Lou, are you okay? Hey, Greta. That was your name, right? Keep my name out of your monster mouth. Fine, shut up and listen. Take Lucy and your brother away from here. Or Hanako will kill all three of you. Zabel, what are you saying? I will? You might outnumber me today, but... I will kill you. I'll kill all of you. Um, I'm already dead. Me too. Me three. Then I'll kill you for good, somehow. I'll destroy you. Just go! 
I hope you come to your senses, because if there is a next time, I will not hesitate to kill you. I was horrified by what I was hearing. Isabel seemed so unlike herself. So collected. So cold. Greta spat on the ground before collecting the unconscious bodies of Lucy and Johannes, easily swinging them over her broad shoulders as she went. Everyone, we're going home. Claire's bleeding pretty badly. What should we do? Let's get her back to Hawthorne Manor, and we'll take care of her there. I have a call to make to the boogeyman. Zabel, she's bleeding out fast. That's why I want you to do it quickly. No one dared question Zabel further. We returned to Hawthorne Manor, trying to keep Claire from bleeding out. She was barely conscious, just mumbling things incoherently. Zabel escorted my mom to her room. She told Mom that we had private monster business to attend to. Mom didn't question it. After Zabel finished speaking to the boogeyman on her magic mirror, she returned to the study. How is she? Not great. Valentina, turn her. Excuse me? The boogeyman just gave his blessing. Are you sure? He hates it when vampires turn humans. She's dying, Valentina. We don't have time. Right. I watched Valentina in awe. She cradled Claire in her arms and then gently used her fangs to puncture the skin on Claire's neck. Valentina drank deep. When she was finished, Zabel handed her a dagger. I winced as I watched Valentina slice it across her own palm and bring her bloody hand to Claire's pale lips. Barely conscious, Claire swallowed with difficulty then coughed and sputtered. Her eyes fluttered and closed. Her body went still. Were you too late? No. In order to be reborn as a vampire, she has to die. It's part of the ritual. She's dead? For the moment. As I tended to Valentina's hand, she gently kissed my forehead. Georgie, it's going to all be okay. I chose to believe her. Is it possible for it not to take? That's always a possibility. Seconds turned to minutes, until... (gasps) Oh, thank goodness. What? What's going on? Welcome to the fabulous world of the undead. You are now a citizen of Wormwood. It was a relief to hear Zabel's chipper tone return. You already know me. I'm Zabel. And I am a Wormwood's town figurehead, and I am here to welcome you to your new life as a vampire. Ah! Oh my god, yes! This is like everything. I hope Jamie and Elliot cover me on their podcast. Why would they? Because I'm a mystery, duh. Claire was excited by the prospect of being reported missing. Zabel, however, looked exhausted. Tired seemed to be her new default. Um, Zabel? Yeah? You okay? No. Right. So, um, you know, you were amazing back there when you put on your authority voice and took control. I wasn't amazing. Yeah, but you were, though. You made a tough call. I thought you hated authority. I do, but I can appreciate it. Thank you? Life was getting more complicated by the minute. I was no longer the newest monster on the block, and Claire would have to learn the ropes of being undead. It seemed unlikely she was my murderer, but perhaps she still had clues to give. Clues she might not even know she had. But for now, it was time to focus on my next suspect, Tony Dante. This has been Georgie Romero is Done For, written and directed by Cat Walker Shea, with additional writing by Sox Whitmore. Produced by Cat Walker Shea, Sox Whitmore, and Rachel Greenberg. 
Sound design by Nathan Coffin. Music composed by Evan Johnson. Featuring the voices of Sox Whitmore as Georgie, Cat Walker Shea as Zabel, Jade Robinson as Hanako, Caleb Feetsum as Ash, Veronica Dash as Valentina, Catherine Means as Barbara, Becca Learman as Claire, Roshni Lueno as Lucy Van Helsing, Alexandria Young Ray as Greta, Gondre Lewis as Johannes. Thank you for tuning in to Georgie Romero is Done For. We hope you enjoyed our show and that you share it with your friends and family. Be sure to tune in for our next episode. Remember to take care of yourselves and each other.